Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Candola, and I'm here to introduce you to finite topological spaces. So finite topological spaces are of particular interest because they can model a variety of structures from different categories. So for example, hypergraphs, some clusial complexes, and a variety of manifolds can all be modeled as finite spaces, allowing for an underlying structure against which they can all be compared. So everything I've drawn here has a representation as a finite topological space. Um, but so what is a finite topological space? Simply put, it's a finite set of points along with a list of subsets of those points that are deemed open sets. Now we can generate all of these open sets using something called the minimal open set or minimal open neighborhood U sub X of each point X to form a basis for the topology on the space. Uh, so just like the real numbers have a total order, topological spaces have a pre-order that's determined by the containment of these minimal open neighborhoods UX. And so we'll say that two points are comparable, X less than or equal to Y, whenever the minimal open neighborhood of X is a subset of the minimal open neighborhood of Y. Furthermore, when each point has its own distinct minimal open neighborhood, we have a partial order instead of a pre-order. And that allows us to draw something called a Hasse diagram, which is a directed graph that stores the same information as of these open sets in a more compact way. So what I have here on the left is a five point space with the minimal open neighborhood about each point circled. And I can use the containment of these minimal open neighborhoods to draw a directed graph. So for example, the minimal open neighborhood of X1 contains all of these four points. So I'm gonna start with a point X1 in my Hasse diagram. And it contains as a subset, the minimal open neighborhood of X2. So X2 is less than X1. The minimal open neighborhood of X4 is contained in both of these subsets. However, when drawing a Hasse diagram, we don't want to have too many arrows. So we're only going to include directed edges between points that have no intermediate containment by a minimal open neighborhood. So instead of an arrow from X1 to X4 here, we just have uh, this. I'll continue to draw the rest of the Hasse diagram as follows. With these directed edges. Typically a Hasse diagram might not have the arrows drawn in and we assume that the direction of all the edges is just down. Now the way that we read off the open sets from this diagram is from what's called the down sets. Now a down set is going to be a set that contains all points that are less than or equal to all of its members. So the down sets correspond to open sets. And if we uh, flip the arrows and look upwards, the upsets correspond to closed sets in the space. Now, whenever two points are comparable in any way, they're deemed adjacent to each other. And furthermore, they're path connected. And so what that means is I can exhibit a continuous map gamma from the unit interval zero one into that two point space. So here's the Hasse diagram of a two point space with X less than Y. And I'm going to define this by sending the open interval zero one to the open point X and the closed point one to the closed point Y. So I invite you to pause if you like and check for yourself that this map gamma is indeed continuous in that the pre-image of open sets in X comma Y is open in the unit interval. Now, if every point in the space can be accessed by some zigzag of adjacent points, then the entire space is path connected. 
And we can prove that by chaining these maps gamma together. Lastly, a map F from X to Y between finite spaces is continuous if whenever two points are comparable in X, their images are comparable the same way under F in Y for all X and Y in our starting space X. We can simplify finite spaces by removing something called a beat point. So a point is beat if either its punctured upset has a unique minimal element or its punctured downset has a unique maximal element. And in either case, we can remove the beat point while preserving the homotopy type of the space. So in this example here, so this is the Hasse diagram that I drew a few slides ago, the point X1 is beat because if we look at its punctured downset, it has a unique maximal element X2. So we can remove the point X1 and get a homotopy equivalence onto this space right here. with these edges drawn in. However, uh, this process of removing beat points isn't unique. So notice that the point X2 is also beat. If we look at its punctured upset, its punctured upset has a unique minimal element, which is just the one point uh, X1 itself. So we can also get a space by deleting X2. And this leaves us with another Hasse diagram with the points X1, X3, X4, and X5. If a space has no beat points remaining, it's called a minimal finite space. And you can see that uh, these two spaces I've drawn on the bottom here do not have any beat points. Each point has uh, two distinct points uh, in its downset or upset. And so when we've removed all beat points from a space, what we're left with is a core. And notice through this example here that the core is not unique. Now, Figuring out the core of a space is important because it brings us to McCord's theorem from 1966, which states that two finite spaces are homotopy equivalent if and only if they have homeomorphic cores. So these three spaces that I've drawn here are all homotopy equivalent to each other because they all have this central space as their core. And in this case, it's homotopy equivalent to a minimal finite model of S1. Uh, and this is useful for proofs where you want to compare finite spaces to um, other spaces that it might be weakly homotopy equivalent to, like simplicial complexes, etc. cetera. Uh, so for more on this, I recommend any of these four sources as a great place to get started on finite topological spaces. Thank you.